Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith and this is your place for professional video production techniques. The subject of this reveal, making the most of markers in Adobe Premiere Pro. Markers are a very good organizational tool. They're a reminder. You got to do something here or put something in or this edit. It's when you don't want to make a mess of, of your edit, you just drop in a marker or you need to uh, delineate what the intro is, the middle, this is the interview, this is the B roll, this is something like that. Anyway, there's a lot of different uses for them and there's actually a markers panel that allows you to move around and we can even export them. Fantastic stuff. Let's go have a look. So I have a timeline over here and I've got my markers panel. It's behind the um, tabs right there. And if you don't see it there, it's probably closed. So make sure it's checked in the window menu. There's nothing in here right now because I have no markers. There's two different kinds of markers. There are sequence markers and clip markers. They both use the same keyboard shortcut, the letter M. So I'm going to go to the beginning of this interview right here and I'm going to tap the M key and you'll see this little green thing show up right there and the marker over here. I'm going to type interview in here. So that, that is a marker at that point. If you, when you add a marker, the duration is zero. So you can't really see interview in here. If I either double click and change it or click and drag here on the left, you can see that I'm starting to open this up and you can see it says interview. Now, obviously I've opened it up past that interview piece just to show you how that, that works. But um, if I zoomed in and we went to the end of that little segment, then I could drag it inside there. It makes more sense. If I zoom out, you're not going to be able to read that, but you could still read that over here. If I click and hit the M key again, and I'll type in DC shoes. And now when I click on the top one on the thumbnail, I'm going to jump between those points inside here. So that's a sequence marker. Now, this is an update in the most current version of Premiere Pro. Creating a clip marker did require opening it up in the source monitor. That's no longer the way it works. In this version, if you have nothing selected, it adds a sequence marker. If you have a clip selected, it adds a clip marker to that clip. It's really smart. So let's zoom in and get onto a clip. So I'm going to select this clip right here and tap the M key and you'll see that it opens up our markers over here, but we really don't see a marker in here. And that's because the, the height of this track is not big enough. It has to at least be expanded a little bit. I'm going to drag this audio portion down a little bit so you can see. And if you don't see them still in the wrench icon, Click in here, show clip markers. Oh, that's where they are. And if you double click on the clip itself, you'll see the clip marker in here. You'll see the clip marker right in there. And the same thing applies. You can double click on this and you could add more comments and you could add a different duration in here, just like the other ones. And you'd actually see it when I click OK. It's actually going to show up maybe a little bit too large in here. Um, the same settings for clip markers and markers are in this panel here. The name of this, um, let's call this um, the red clip. That's the, the place where it shows up. Um, this is the duration. You can jump between markers in here and even delete the marker. And you can even change the color of that marker. Now, all of this will change once I click OK. There are multiple kinds of markers. I'm strictly going to uh, concentrate on comment markers. Chapter, segmentation, web links, flash cue points. Um, we're we're going to look at those possibly in another day, but let's just concentrate on the most important one, which are comment markers. And when I click OK, you'll see it's changed its color and uh, shows up right there. OK, what if I have a sequence? Let me find 
a sequence in here that has, I've got, that's it right there. That is not a clip. It looks like a clip, but it's actually an embedded sequence. If I open that up a little bit, tap the M key, I've added a marker, and if I double click on this, it's a sequence. There is the marker for that sequence. So that is a nested sequence in a sequence that you just added a clip marker to it that turns into a sequence marker when you open it up. I mean, that makes sense when you think about it. In here, I'm looking at what I think is or what should be treated as a clip. So it should be, uh, I should be able to add it as easy as a clip marker, but it is a nested sequence. Okay, that's no problem. All right, you can move between the markers. There's a marker panel up here. Now, this is not just for markers. This is for marking in and marking out, just your regular I and O keys and marking the full duration of a clip. But down here, we can add a marker, go to next marker, shift M, go to previous marker, and that's command shift M on the Mac. So if I have a bunch of markers, let me just start doing that. I'll jump out to here and I'm going to be tapping the M key. Just I'm not going to add a duration or any notes in here. I'm just going to be hitting the M key. Oh, and I had actually had my sequence selected down there when I did that. Okay, so now I've got a bunch of markers. I'm going to go back to the beginning by hitting home, shift, M, M, M. I'm holding the shift key down and pressing the M key. I'm adding the control key, command on Mac, and I'm jumping back between them. Oh, very nice. There is one kind of anomaly that uh, you got to get used to. Now, I've added sequence markers and clip markers into this sequence. If I have nothing selected at all over here, you will see the sequence markers. You will not see the clip markers. If I click on a clip, now you'll see the clip markers. Currently, there is no way of showing both the independent clip markers and the sequence markers. Adobe Audition actually allows you to look at all of them. Maybe that'll happen a little bit later. But as it is right now, you have to select a clip to make that happen. All right. And you can also search for uh, clips. So if I, markers, if I go over here and type interview, you can see I can get to that. DC, there's my DC shoes. So I can jump to those very easily. And the last thing that I want to show you that's pretty darn cool, in the file menu, export markers. You can export them out as a common delimited file, which you could bring into Excel or a web page. And I'm going to export this out, click OK. And when this is made, it's going to tell me it's successfully exported. I can open the folder. That's the folder. It's an HTML page with all of the thumbnails in it. And there you go. Look at that. There's interview. There's DC shoes that I uh, uh, wrote as part of the comment. All of them get an in and out duration and marker type inside here. So making the most of markers in Premiere Pro, very useful, very powerful to help you organize stuff, jump back to points that you wanted to get to and export this out. If I had to send this out as a cut list to someone, hey, then they've got a visual representation they can just open with a browser. Alrighty, uh, hopefully you found this informative. If you have, then please click on the subscribe button for video revealed. If you're not already an Adobe Creative Cloud user, then get on over to adobe.com and download your free 30-day trial. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to get you looking your best.